If you're looking for a DIY approach to camo trap photography, you're in the right place. Tim Terrell has a very inventive approach to camo trap or trail camera photography using DSLRs for stills and video. Be sure to stay around to the end when we look at some of his beautiful stills of mountain lions, foxes, and other wildlife. Please hit the like button and subscribe buttons to keep this channel going. Hello and welcome to episode number 110 of the Photographing the West podcast. I'm your host, Kirby Flanagan, and I'm a nature and wildlife photographer. Today's guest is wildlife photographer, Tim Terrell. Welcome, Tim. Thank you. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. So how did you get started in camera trap photography? Gosh, you know, I thought about that. I don't remember where I saw the approach originally, but uh, it might have been looking at cam traptions um, equipment there in the UK and looking at some of their images and thinking, oh boy, that'd be good. Um, and some other motion, motion sensor images, uh, motion sensor camera trap images. Um, it just inspired me. Uh, I've got all the big glass, you know, 600, 800 millimeter, chased, carried that stuff around for many, many years. And uh, I just kind of got bored with it. Um, so thinking, I'm going to be creative. I'm going to do something different. And so the camera trap, uh, camera traps were born in my world, you know, for me. Uh, I was thinking the other day I was visiting with a guy. I set a my first home brewed camera trap made out of plywood and PVC pipe. Oh, what a clunker! It was big and heavy, and oh my gosh, packed it up the top of the mountain, set it up, had great success. Got mountain lion, bobcat, coyote, fox, skunk, you know, all of the all the things you want to get, but oh boy, it's heavy. <laughs> Batteries and sensors and all that stuff, but uh, yeah. oh boy, it's come a long ways from there. So you've been doing this for a few years, it sounds like. Yeah, probably three or four years, maybe. Yeah, good. Well, you've made some uh, pretty remarkable photos in that time, so it'd be fun to look at those. Oh yeah, gosh, yeah. And, uh, you know, you start off with whatever new species they're doing and everything's good. And as you go along and check and check and refine your images pretty quick. In the beginning, what I thought was good is junk because <laughs> I adjusted lighting and uh, just, you know, I guess a little bit of luck involved or a lot of luck. Somebody told me one day that luck is when preparation and opportunity come together. So. All right. All right. Yep. <laughs> I assume that's correct. Yeah, I think so. So do you research your subjects to have a better idea where to place your cameras? Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. You got to know, you got to know what, where to go in their habitat and uh, just do internet search. Uh, Go out and scout. But right now, with the, the, the conditions in northern Nevada, you know, it's hot and dry, and everything's tied to water. So, right. either on water or a trail coming to water uh, would be a key location for just about everything. Okay. Yeah, you got to do your research. You got to know what you're doing, or what they're doing. You know, makes hey, it a lot easier. Put them up anywhere. Um, private properties, uh, real remote locations, uh, just a secure environment for my equipment. And then, okay, I'm going to go on this area. Let's say a ranch in northern Nevada. Okay, so it's going to be secure. It's a ranch. It's, you know, not everybody can go on there. Uh, okay, what's on that ranch? 
okay, let's say there's bighorn sheep and there's mule deer and there's mountain lion and ox and coyote. Okay. So, so, so um, then, okay, where's the trails? Well, find the game trails. What's on the game trails? Okay, so the first thing I do is put trail cam on game trails, water holes, in a, in a location. Okay, what's coming, what's activating the, the trail cam? And then pattern whatever wildlife's coming, like uh, let's say bears. Okay, bears are coming down this drainage. They're coming down at night. They're coming, you know, they're kind of a all day or all night kind of deal, but a nocturnal or crepuscular hour more than anything else. Okay, which way, what way are they coming and what way are they leaving? And uh, so any, at any rate, anyway, figure out, pattern the animals, when they're coming, when they're not coming, and, and build off of that. Set your cameras up. It takes a little bit for wildlife to become accustomed to the cameras. Um, once they become accustomed, the first time a bear sees one of my camera traps or trail cams, they want to, you know, hey, there's something new in the environment. What is this? They're not always destructive. They're just curious. It's just something new. Um, so they'll investigate it. Sheep or deer, they're afraid of it. Some, some some animals are real cautious. Some animals are more curious. Uh, once they become accustomed to the cameras, they don't even pay any attention. I've got one camera that's been in position for, gosh, a couple of years. Everything just goes by. They don't even they don't, they don't even pay any attention to it. Uh, camera, let's say for bears, put up in a new location early spring. No, they're they're hungry as heck. They want to eat everything, and they want to mess with everything. So they they're a little destructive. So. so, do you still build your own enclosures, or do you use the commercial ones, or how does that work? Oh, I build my own. Yeah, I I build my own. Um, I like to use uh, oh eight inch electrical union boxes from Home Depot. Mm -hmm. Kind of a hard plastic square box. You got to drill the holes and you know put them all together. Uh, as far as the lens ports go, I I really really my preferred lens is an eight millimeter fisheye lens. I love it, low, close, and wide. Uh, okay. That and uh, pelican cases, or yeah, pelican case or pelican like cases. Yeah. Uh, Harbor Freight's got a pretty good price on them. Oh, okay, good to know. Strap them to a tree, strap them to a, excuse me, strap them to a tree, strap them to a rock. Yeah. What do you, what do you use for your lens ports? Uh, on uh, Amazon, I order uh, a dome lens port that's used on security cameras, clear dome lens ports. Uh -huh. Three and three quarter inch, four inch. Those are what I use most of the time. Okay. And uh, they're they're kind of an acrylic. They scratch easy, so you got to be careful. You'll scratch them. You know, I try real hard not to, but oh, <laughs> out checking cameras. Yeah. One time in particular, oh, I got to be careful. Don't scratch your lens port. Opened it up, plopped it right down in the gravel. <laughs> <You know. laughs> Crap. So, uh, no, I went to a local trip plastic. They have this polishing compound that sort of polishes the scratches down. Uh -huh. But anyway, you just put them on with, uh, just screw them on the housing and use some uh, caulking. Put it on there. You know, you just scratch it, you just take it off, put a new one on, no big deal. Uh -huh. They're cost effective. They're 10 bucks, maybe that. Okay. All right, well, that's pretty clever. So uh, you mentioned uh, using wide angle lens. Uh, what other gear do you use? 
what other le- gear gear yeah um let's see i like to use cam traptions um transmitters receivers for the flashes and uh, they they seem to work real well you can hook up external batteries to them um so the battery battery life is always the challenge this time of year it's warm batteries last a long time oh my gosh it's wonderful uh, winter time you know not, not so much but uh cam traptions transmitter receivers i have cam tra- cam traptions uh sensor it's it can be it's a wireless sensor i really like that um i've made sensors motion sensors ordering uh, components off the internet uh the vivitar uh, i don't know the vivitar is still around there's one just like it called movo uh the movo sensor uh it's pretty hyper you got to kind of tone it down build a housing for that with a i'm going to say a snoot on it uh the sensor is inside uh once again a little union box little electrical union box with a little tube coming out of it that sort of cuts down on the activations in there would be a battery and a transmitter and um and kind of design the housing holding all of this to camouflage into the environment you're going into so in a, in a bunch of rocks well you just make it look like a rock if it's in the woods you make it look like a piece of wood um, all of that is hide it from the animals of course but then hide it from the two-legged creatures so sure uh, day night switch right now i'm working on uh using a day night switch I want to photograph some bighorn sheep uh, on guzzlers and the flashes will just freak them out. I'm not going to use flash on sheep though. They I don't like that. But uh, mountain lions sheep come in primarily during the day to water. Uh the lions they'll come in at night and the red, other predators the lions they don't care about the flash. They like, "Oh wow, what's that?" So, they might, you know, it'll pop and they'll look and they might twitch, but no big deal. Uh so anyway, working on some day mu- day night flash triggers. Um the um floating blind floating blind floating camera trap uh with uh, a duck dock piece of driftwood type uh in front of an 8 mm lens maybe a foot in front of it the uh the biggest challenge there is getting the motion sensor not to just trip 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 I checked it the other day at 7000 images uh, 7000 <laughs> images there was like oh my gosh but you know I'd rather have 7000 and a dozen good ones than you know 20 and nothing <laughs> been there done that sure so you know kind of just keep massaging things but the floating duck dock in front of the floating camera trap I'm working on a set right now would be a beam break they, they get ready right ducks break the beam between two sensors and sending and receiving but then for the images you can't have a sensor there you know it doesn't look natural you've got to make you know, blend it in <laughs> make it look like part of the wood so yeah got to be creative it's fun yeah challenge yeah i guess so So what what cameras do you use? I use uh primarily Canon Rebel. Okay. Uh they're cost effective. I've got everything from the T1s which you know you can pick them up offline for just a couple hundred bucks. So, um it's uh can uh, the Canon Rebel T6 T6i um T5 those are real good. The new Canon Rebels you've got to be very careful the newer Canon Rebels do not have on the flash plate on the camera they need to have a center pin 
that fires the that will fire the contraptions transmitter to fire the flashes or trip the transmitter. If it doesn't, it's got to have a little round center. I don't know why Canon did that, but they did that. So anyway, buyer beware on there. Yeah. I've also got uh, well, some infrared camera with it's it's one um, B Mark three, kind of an expensive camera, but it's it's there. It's locked and it's you know being used. So Canon primarily um, out of dozen cameras, 90% of them are Canon Rebels of one type or another. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, you wouldn't want to put your 1DS Mark IVs out there, I don't suppose. No, <laughs> no. I wouldn't mind using them. If I'm there, uh, let's say transmitter, receiver, motion sensor, you know, I'm, I'm there, I'm going to do squirrel for you know bird nesting cavity or something that's fine but no i'm not leaving it yeah i wouldn't think so so most of your pictures look like they're taken with the uh, standard white flash is that correct yeah do you use any of the uh, ir type flash yes i do um I've got uh, <clears throat> one set up right now, infrared set up, um, uh, I call it Egret Lagoon, and two IR flashes on that. It's just a regular flash, but it's got a, a filter you put over the end of the flash to make it infrared. So. Okay. Uh, it works good. I've done some stuff around some trees, some, uh, uh, you ask about how how do you know where to set a camera? Um, I'm going to say Bobcats and Mountain Lions. I'm going to get back to the IR here in one second, but I go to ridges, ridges, hilltops, um, saddles, points, whatever, where there's a lone tree, go look under that tree. Lions, Bobcats, Coyotes, a little bit, they'll, they like to mark the, that, area they use it like a cat box they'll uh poop and i call it sending a female they leave their scent there and travel yeah. along this is my this is my country don't you know you guys everybody else just stay away so anyway it's got a camera there no big deal so i use ir on those uh there'd be absolutely no no stress for bobcat no stress for lion okay so, done that with great success okay well be sure to stick around to the end of this uh video when we look at tim's wonderful photos uh, um so we talked a bit about sensors uh some of them you make yourself uh, some of them you get from cam traction i guess is that right cam traction just basically makes one so it is a dandy uh they're from the uk you have to order them from the uk um uh, movo sensors i use a lot uh there's another sensor by a gentleman named bill forbes uh, he uh he makes a sensor and sells a sensor um sensors that i make from components offline uh, to build those into a piece of wood or Number number one sensor I use is probably Movo. Okay. Number two, cam traction. Number three is the home brewed type. Okay. So um, how do you keep your camera and flash charged? You indicated that that's a, a problem in the winter, which it is for all of us using uh, cameras in the winter. But uh, how do you get around that? Well, the uh, battery. You have to get a dummy battery for your camera, like one that you put a dummy battery in your camera and then you plug it into an outlet, which has got a positive negative feed. That's hooked up to a plate for a Sony eight volt battery. It's a little like a Sony video camera uh, battery. And that is probably the primary uh, power 
for all my cameras. Um, I've also used 7.4 volt remote control batteries. Uh, they're readily available and you charge them and they hook direct to your to the camera as well, you know, with a, uh, a dummy battery and then <clears throat> a male female uh, connecting point. And uh, I use the same Sony batteries on the flashes. There's a bit of a challenge on that. Um, the flashes, they don't, eight volt is a little too hot for the, for the um, Nikon SP28 flashes. So I use a step down piece of equipment on the uh, batteries where the battery attaches to 7.4 volts and then it works no problem. So Sony battery and then to run uh, transmitter receivers, they run off um, AA batteries. Well, that's like three volts. So a single AA is one and a half volt. A single D battery is one and a half volt, but it has a much higher uh, 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 milliamp hour capacity. So I put together, it'll, those transmitter receivers will actually run perfectly fine on three uh, D batteries. So I use rechargeable Ds and I use regular alkaline Ds. Depends. Uh, three of them solder together uh, in uh, parallel and uh, or series, I'm sorry, in series, not parallel. Uh, I realize some of this is a little bit technical, but I can't go into detail on everything. Take forever to explain it. Just Google it. But uh, anyway, yeah, use it. Use it's all about milliamp hour, and uh, nothing more frustrating. Go through all the research and do all the work. Everything's ready. And your battery's dead. Well, that's yeah. pointless. Let's yeah. Stay home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have a very interesting uh, floating camera trap. Uh, how how'd you go about making that, and and how and where do you use it in general? Um, how did I make it? Well, you know, uh, necessity is the mother of invention. So, how am I going to make this camera not you know float? Okay, a piece of plywood. Let's say two foot by two foot square. Um, in past, I made a floating blind with a piece of plywood and uh, two pieces of uh, two-inch foam insulation board. You get it at Home Depot or Lowe's, whatever. So I just, for the floating camera trap, uh, piece of plywood with the same styrofoam board underneath it. Want that to break apart and you know pollute the water, so I enclose it with a. Oh, you can buy rolls of very thin tin at Home Depot and kind of make an enclosure for the foam, so it doesn't get you know it's not polluting anything. And uh, I just attach everything and attach everything to it uh, to test it, the floating capabilities, its buoyancy. I have a little pond and. Put a cinder block on it, leave it there a few days and see if it floats. Mm. <laughs> Lights are coming in. <laughs> Whatever. That's just the way it is. So, anyway, uh, for buoyancy, I just I build it. Okay, it'll hold the cinder block. And then uh, another, you had asked about equipment and the housings for the camera. That's one thing. Housings for flashes, that's a whole nother beast. What works best for me on flash housings is four inch black PVC sewer pipe, um, cut to about mm, 12, 14 inches. I use a cap on one end uh, with a hole cut in it and plexiglass for the flash with the visible light to pop through. And the other end, uh, uh, they sell a rubber cap that has a 
uh, hose clamp on it, big hose clamp on it. That's what I use on the back part. And then a variety of clamps attached, bolted to the um, flash housing to attach it to a tree or attach it to whatever, uh, variety of ways to attach it. But anyway, it's very important. I've, I've had uh, bears knock pull flashes down. I've had them pull the end off and get inside and pull the flashes out and crunch them. <laughs> but I haven't had them do that when I use the hose clamp, the, the rubber hose clamp on it. They just can't seem to get into it. But I'm sure they can if they want to, but they haven't. Um, this water site, water tight, um, protecting it from the environment is probably the biggest thing. Watch yeah. just a naked flash hanging out there. All right. Anyway. So you're, got, so you're putting these mostly in ponds, I'm, I'm guessing, not, uh, not in uh, large lakes. Yes, I, I apologize. Yeah, I got lost. Uh, yeah, ponds, for the most part, and hook a paint pole. I connect a uh, paint roller, piece of piece of uh, one and a half inch or one inch. I'm not sure the exact diameter, but uh, PVC pipe, a uh, paint roller, slide right into it, and on the end of that, the paint roller, you hook one of those real long poles that you you know you paint a wall or paint the side of your house with. Hook that onto there and. Ease it on out in the pond. Uh, the floating camera trap is there. In front of the camera trap is the duck dock, or the you know ducks get up on or whatever. I put a little corn on there to get them to come up, get accustomed to coming up, and pretty quick. Oh, they're all there all the time. You know what I mean? Uh, it's, it's very clever. Like just ease it on out. Tie it to a piece of, you know, a strap or something. Strap it to a tree or a key post or stake in the ground. <clears throat> Works pretty good. Turtles. I uh, originally Nature Conservancy asked me to photograph their these uh, uh, western pond turtles. They're kind of a special species for us, for them. That's what really got me going and. Took the challenge. It just happened to be wood ducks in the area. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, they're beautiful. You got some really great photos of them as well. So let's uh, let me share my screen and uh, let's take a look at a few of the photos and uh, talk about that. There. Okay. Mountain lion, obviously. Yeah. That was with an eight millimeter lens. Um, I was trying to do uh, uh, mice, different mice and squirrels, right about where the lion's foot is. I put a little peanut butter down there, and the mice would come up, you know, like mice do, and they would trip the sensor and the flashes. You can tell by the lion's eye, the catch light in his eye, there's off to the lion's. Lion's right, our left. Lion, uh, that area I was set up, pinion mice. Um, trying to get a great big eared little pinion mice, uh, antelope, ground squirrel, that type of thing. Been checking the cameras. Um, my friend was with me, and his dog uh, pooped up there. And that night, apparently, that lion smelled that dog poop and came up there to uh, investigate it. Walk, walk, uh, it's a total surprise. They, you know, the lions sort of circle the area. They have a big circle they can travel on. And he was coming through and smelled and came over and checked it out. It worked out real nice. Yeah. So do you do any... Uh... Uh, lens correction in your post processing because these don't look like eight millimeters. These, these lenses are pretty nice. Now that was cropped, obviously. Yeah. 
and uh, yeah, if I get a little distorted, I, I do, uh, you know, you, in Lightroom, I use Lightroom 99% of the time, and there's a, uh, you know, lens optimization tool, but I don't worry about it too much. It is what it is. This was in the heavy brush and the flash um, to the right and a flash behind the camera and it created that unique lighting. Uh, you gotta just be real creative with the lighting. The crazy thing about camera trapping, go and set your light, set everything and come back a week later and make changes. Changes in a studio or something would take you just a minute Camera trapping, it takes you a week or two weeks or three weeks to get the lighting just the way you want it. And then hope the animal comes by. <laughs> okay, here's the plan. Okay, Mr. Bobcat, I want you to come this way. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that, that worked out real nice. Do you use any uh, lures or scents or anything? For you know, I do. <clears throat> I like to use, though, there's Tapman Do is a smell that trappers use them. You know, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not doing anything illegal. Um, let's say a roadkill squirrel or jackrabbit. Uh, leave it in the middle of the road so then the animals want to come in the middle of the road to get it. Well, that's foolish. Take it up on the hillside. Put it on the hillside, put a camera on it. Um, skunk smell. Yeah, different essence of skunk. I don't know what it is about skunk, but Skunks don't just go around spraying their smell for, you know, because they want to. I'm sure it takes energy and to produce that. So if a skunk squirts, something happened. So I'm, that's why the predators will come and look. So, oh, what the heck happened here? Let's better go check that out. So, yeah, I'm not afraid of using a little, little lure. Okay. No big deal. You know, there's people that uh, are dead. Oh, I don't use it yet. Well, good for you. Tell me what to do. You know, I'll tell you what to do. I'll work out real good. This, I really enjoyed the up the old tree. Here's looking up your old tree. Um, it's all about perspective. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Coming down the tree, oh, what a fantastic view. That, that worked real well. The gray squirrels were there, nuthatch, you know, a lot of different birds coming down the tree. Um, everything was going just great until the, the bears came out of hibernation and they, uh, they came and adjusted everything. <laughs> yeah. Once again, when they come, first come out of hibernation, they're aggressive, just expect it. Pull my cameras and <laughs> put them up later. But uh, yeah, that was nice. That was fun. That is a uh, camera going over a drainage, a ditch, and a game trail going right under that log. The camera is strapped to the underside of that log pointing straight down. And uh, uh, got bear, bobcat, fox, coyote. The only one I didn't get was a lion. A lion passed under there, was there, and my batteries went dead. Okay. It was on the trail cam. So back to batteries, always batteries. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that was fun. <laughs> a real close up of a bear. <laughs> yeah, eight millimeter lens. This is really cool. Yeah, that was a uh, camera on the side of a tree pointing down. I was trying to do uh, flying squirrels. And uh, this bear, he came and climbed up the tree. And uh, yeah. Most but, of these uh, seem to be brown phase black bears, huh? Yeah. Yeah.
There's your ducks. Oh yeah, that's just beautiful. You know, the sunrise, sunset, it's all about light. Uh, lighting is everything. And Mama Wood Duck and her little babies up on the duck dock, uh, put moss on there. And we're just in front of that the wood duck there, uh, in front of Mama on the right. That's where the sensor is. It's covered with some pond moss, pond weeds. Uh, I put some corn on there, some whole corn. They're used to coming up on there. They they eat a few kernels and move on, them and the mallards. But at any rate, uh, yeah, Mama brought the babies up. Just lovely. Just like, oh my gosh. Wow. Oh. So is the sensor in here in this area? Um, let's see. Right about in the middle of the duck's chest, the Mama duck on the right. Oh, over here? Right, right in there, just, okay. just right right in that area, right there, you just touched it. Yeah, it's covered with uh, pond moss. Okay. Yeah, that's a different one there, uh, different, different duck dock. The sensor, there's a cam traction sensor in that hollow log. That one right there, yep, yeah, it's in there. And uh, uh, it's obviously the duck on the left is the one that tripped it. Yeah. But yeah, that's cool. You know, they're both chasing the female. Like, Get out of here, you guys, leave me alone. <laughs> There's so many, like I say, you get thousands of images or hundreds of images and sorting through them. Okay, the uh, catch light isn't there. And, you know, this is, they're not turning there. I don't want two body, two uh, body, duck bodies, let's say, uh, merging. And you, know, you, get, yeah. you can afford to be real picky in editing. Yeah. Well, here's uh, your, uh floating yeah. blind yeah it's the, quite, uh, quite a deal the one on the right uh, i have a tendency to over engineer things but i guess that's better than under engineering uh, the one on the right is uh version one and it has the uh the pipe on the outer edge is filled with foams uh, no, I take that back. It was just put on there and sealed. It just, and it works. It works fine, but it's a little bulky. The one behind it is just the foam. Uh, one and a half inch, two layers of one and a half inch foam. And it, its buoyancy is fine. Uh, so your flashes are in those uh, tubes? Yes. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta be real careful. Uh, Checking and servicing those when they're out in the, in the water. Uh, there, there's a really nice pocket knife at the bottom of that pond. One <laughs> with a screwdriver and everything on it. <laughs> uh, but uh, you see above the lens port, there's there's a little shield. That's a sun shield. Well, that right that your sense, your mouse oh, is okay. on is. Yeah, there's the sun shield. That's the eight millimeter lens below it, trying to keep the All sun right. glare off. And uh, the top box is there to uh, for the cam traptions transmitter to send the flash signal to the flash. Okay. So, and the other box is uh, uh, version one with the pipe around the edge. I use the sensor, there's a sensor in that uh, square box, uh, no, the other, the other unit, the other camera trap, version oh. one. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, top, you see that little blue circle? Yeah. There's a sensor in that, and the sensor, sensor's sensor is reading from that pipe right there, reading down that tube to, try and snoot out pulse activity. Okay. But uh, ends up I don't I don't use a sensor on that because it'd be hyperactive. As far as the sensor is concerned, if the wind blows that 
unit, you know, hey, some the whole world's moving. I better take pictures of it right there. So I just use that strictly for sunshade. But you know, if if that was strapped to a tree or a post or something, there would be a sensor in that box. If that okay. makes sense. Okay. That's a decoy, I'm assuming. Yeah, that's just floating around. I've bob been bobbing around my little pond for I don't know, a couple of years now. <laughs> Does that help any? <laughs> no, it makes me have a smile. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, you know. No, I, I'm not trying to attract them. I just had it, threw it in there. Okay. Gotcha. Well, it's been great fun, uh, as well as educational, Tim. Thanks for sharing your work and uh, some great photos. Where can, Absolutely. Where can people find you and your photography? So I use most of my photography now is strictly on uh, Facebook and Instagram. Um, I do have a web page, dig, digitalwildlifeimages.net, that uh, I've uh, put the camera trap, a lot of the camera trap construction information on there. Okay, great. Uh, it, it's it's outdated. I've the, uh, at that point, I hadn't really settled on any battery type or battery type system, and uh, that needs to be updated. But I don't know; it's not a you know not a huge priority for me. But you know, a website is you know it's only up to date the day you do it. The next day, it's outdated. So yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> Too true. Well, I'll put all that in the show notes and uh, so people can find you and your photos and so forth. Yeah, if anybody has any questions, just ask, right? You know, I'm, I'm an easy guy, easy guy to get along with. Okay, good to know. So each episode of Photographs in the West is published on the 15th and 30th of the month. Be sure to tune in on July 15th for another episode with an interesting photographer doing interesting things. Bye for now.